Second Chronicles 28. <clears throat> Ahaz was 20 years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 16 years in Jerusalem. But he did not that which was right in the sight of the Lord like David his father. Alright, so we're in Judah. Unlike Israel, all Israel kings were wicked. Here's a king that didn't do right. For he walked in the ways of the kings of Israel. And the kings of Israel were all wrong. So that tells you right there. They were involved in idolatry. They had the golden calves. We've long passed, uh, you know, the, the Baal worshippers. And he's picking it all up. He made molten images to Balaam. Now Baal is the sun god. Ashtoreth is the moon. And the Balaam again, that's the little gods that produce from... And if you check the Rome and Greek uh, mythologies, yeah, the male gods met with the female gods, and uh, and then the, you know the male gods met with the female humans, and the female gods met with the male humans, and all, all this stuff. And I don't think about what the day and age we are in. I don't ever record that the gods of the Greeks or Romans ever had a male and a male and a female and a female, as far as I can check. If it was, I've never heard about it. But Balaam is plural, is the children of the gods. So what do you do when you, when you get the worship of Mary, the queen of heaven? You get a child of the gods. And then Jesus Christ to them, it's just another one of the little gods. Heck, there's a religion out there. Come knock on your door and tell you that Jesus and the devil or Satan is brothers. Where do you get that nonsense? That's where you run Mary all the way back to Sister Eve. And then it says over there in John that uh, he was conceived of the, the wicked one or the evil one, Cain. And then you show a picture of Mary standing on the snake's head. And then you run her back to Genesis 3.15 as the Messiah, as the one who's going to, not Jesus Christ. Check out the pictures of Mary, the Catholic Church draws. She's the one who's going to bruise the heel. Now she's the one who's going to bruise the serpent. It's all this wickedness. By the way, uh, Jesus said uh, when a man dies, he says equals the angels. They're never given to marriage. They don't have sex in heaven. There are no children being produced in heaven. You know, where the morons, I mean the Mormons teach, you know, there are babies waiting somewhere in outer space and you got to have multiple wives to produce human babies. So, you know, the, the, the gods in space can come down and, and get into the body. I mean, this is wickedness. That's why they teach you can have multiple marriages. So every baby you have, there's a little bit you know, garbage. Moreover, he burnt incense in the valley of the sun in Hinnom. Well, that's not what God told him to do. Just a couple kings back here, Uzziah, he offered incense to God in the temple where he was not supposed to and got leprosy. Here's a guy offering incense to a God. Now, here's a question for you. Is it right for a Christian to burn incense? Why are you burning it? You burn it because you know make your house smell better, uh, and stuff like that. That's perfectly proper. I'm bur I'm burning it for Jesus, or I'm burning it for. Show me a New Testament passage where it says you're to burn incense, and I'll show you passages where incense is a type of prayer. God has never told us in this age to burn incense. Only occults and religions burn incense to Jesus or to God or anybody else. But if you want to burn it because you like the smell and you know it purifies your house of smells and stuff like that, there's nothing wrong with that. But then again, let me ask you another question. The Bible says abstain from all appearance of evil. You got friends who know you're a born again Christian, come over your house and say, what do you think they're going to think? I can tell you right now another reason why some people burn incense. To hide the smell of marijuana. While they're smoking. it. 
It's a groovy, cool thing in the 50s and 60s. And burnt his children in the fire. Well, God definitely did not tell you that. You want to talk about abortion of America? This is abortion outside the womb. Never mind, you know, in the fetus. This is outside. This is this is purely, purely murder of your own children. And notice it says children, not child, children. That's plural. Can I ask you a question? Do you see America where we've been reading lately? What what's going to happen to Judah? But what did the what did the churches preach today? We're going to have this great revival. We're going to have this great thing, and people are going to be saved, and everything's going to be hunky dory, and America will be right there with God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the fourth member of the Trinity. Hallelujah! It's so bad. Now listen, I pledge allegiance to the flag. You want to ask me where God says pledge allegiance? Pledge is making an oath. You know what the Bible says about oaths? I see New Jerusalem. We're following the footprints of Judah. Judah will be destroyed. They are killing their children. How many times have you read... You know, a baby found in a dumpster. Or a baby accidentally flushed down the toilet. You say that was China. So what? It's a day and age. It's worldwide. There are babies that are in, in India at a certain time of year. They got this big elephant god that it's on these Flintstone kind of wheels. And as this thing is rolled down the street, I am told by a missionary, they throw their babies underneath the wheels of that thing for some purification or whatever. That's been going on years after years after years. And then they turn around and try to tell you when you went to store, what about the heathen? What about the Americans? After the abominations of the heathen whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. That's why God cast them out of the land. That's why he gave the land to Israel. Because they were committing these things and Judah's doing it. So guess what? What happened to the brethren is going to happen to the, to God's people even. And don't think just because you're God's person and you do the sins of the people. Oh, I get special rules. No, you're going to get more of a judgment. Because you ought to knew better. He sacrificed also and burnt incense in the high places and on the hills and under every green tree. Thy rocks and rills I love. I don't love no rock but Jesus Christ. I'm not anti-American. If I was anti-American, I wouldn't be out there witnessing to Americans. I wouldn't be on the streets preaching if I wasn't, if it wasn't for America. Wherefore the Lord his God... Now, isn't that interesting? It says, his God. So, what do we say on the streets? Prepare to meet thy God. God is the God of everybody. He's the one that made everybody. Saved or lost. One day you will stand before your God. I don't care if you don't believe in the God. You're going to be in big shock. When the thing that you didn't believe in is going to be standing right before you. And you're going to have to give an account. This guy is wicked, living right, and he's still, God is still his God. Every man in the, in the graveyard today is a Bible-believing, God-believing, fearing person. For some, it's just too late. Think about that next time you walk, th walk through a graveyard. Every one of those people in there today, no matter where they are, saved or lost, are a Bible-believing, God-fearing person. Some was just too late. 
And if you were to get your average Baptist church into a graveyard and allow God to do a miracle and have those that are in hell come up out of those graves for a minute, but you don't need to because Luke chapter 16 says everyone that is in hell wants you to go to their family and tell them. But you just say it's a parable. Delivered him into the hand of the king of Syria. So, war, troubles, problems, one cause of problems. One cause of problems, because there are several. It's when you're disobeying God and not doing what you're supposed to. That's one source. We're not, we're not going to look at the source of the problem. But this is one source, rebelling against God. Because God said, hey, listen, I'm his God. He's my, he's mine. I'm going to have to whip him. Shows the love of God. He's trying to get Ahaz back. He ain't doing it just to, you know, to whip him just to whip him. If you know the scriptures. And they smote him and carried away a great multitude of his captives and brought them to Damascus. Paul on the road to Damascus. And he was also delivered into the hand of the king of Israel, who smote him with a great slaughter. Well, isn't that interesting? The king of Israel, that's where he got all these gods and worship from, and the king turned on him. I'm going to tell you something. You run back to those people who are religionists, you run to those people that don't know Jesus Christ, and you take on their way, they will stab you in your back. They are not your friends recorded in scriptures. And if you do go run to those people, and then when you do get stabbed, don't go crying to God that why you ended up where you are. And don't come running to me and so I'll go, nah, 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 nah. It's in the scriptures. Paul says you are to tell a person twice about Jesus. You are to tell them twice about their sins. You have two times to tell them, and they don't listen. That's your job. You've done it. It's called separation and division. This guy had no business going to Israel. Now Israel has turned on him. And he was also delivered in the hand of the king of Israel who smote him with a great slaughter. So he was smote personally. His, his multitude was smitten. And then, they, and then Israel came down and smote more. For Pekah, the son of Remaliah, slew in Judah 120,000 in one day. Now why is that recorded in there? Because 121,000 people died on the blood of Ahaz. Had he done right, had he done what God told him to do, had he not gone the way of Israel, had he not followed the wrong gods, had he followed a God who is his God in Judah with the priest, the temple, and all that, this 120,000 men would never have died. Don't tell me your sin, no one gets hurt. Others get hurt. And the guy who's doing it is still living. That's one thing I don't like about God. And I believe, I mean, if I ever have to stand before God and give an account, I believe I would be able to say this, God. This is one thing I don't like about you. People suffer for other people. And some people don't even get the lesson that you're suffering for. What I'm saying is your, your suffering in your life may be a witness to somebody else to trust Christ or to get right in their life. And they may never. But you went about the suffering. These 120,000 men died because Ahaz was doing wrong. We'll see if Ahaz ever gets right. But 120,000 men died. Remember David with Uriah? He sent Uriah the most hardest part of the battle. And it said that other men died along with him. I don't know if I ever gave a number. But Uriah and men of David died because David had a heat of passion of a woman he wasn't supposed to. And we just can keep on going and going. 
Because of not believing God, Hagar told Abraham, here, I mean, uh, Sarah took, told Abram, take Hagar. Rebel against God. And Ishmaelites are still a sin against Israel enemies today, 2013. Get another point. Your sins will travel on long before you are dead. Sexual transmitted diseases can be passed on to a child, to their children, to their children, to many generations before it may eventually wear out. Grandchildren you never met to get STD. I've heard all kinds of particular stories of men who cheated on, and then what, what the Lord did to them, boom, rest of their life. You don't want to mess with sin. And this guy here, which were all valiant men, the best, the elite, the Marines, the SEAL teams, men that were honorable. Because they had forsaken the Lord God of their fathers. Alright, well. Ahaz has caused the nation to fail. And there, and listen, I pray for my president. I pray for his soul and his wife, Michelle, and those two girls. But President Obama, the way he lives, he's destroying this nation. Because we have, have never had such a time in this, in this nation where states are now getting on the bandwagon for sodomite marriages. He allowed it once. He allowed it and all that. And now boom, 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 boom. And that, by the way, that didn't, wasn't just with him. That started with President Clinton. Listen, the hammer hasn't dropped on America yet. These tornadoes, these hurricanes, have been coming. they're just mind, They're warnings of God. There, get right. Wait till God says, okay, I had it with you. Now you're going to get the axe. Listen. We are a dying breed of witnessing on streets. When we're dead, what churches are going to replace us? Let me stop this thing here for a minute.